A senior citizen crossed the street and raised his head to examine an neon sign for a five-star nightclub. The old man opened the door, dragging his feet and wearing a pair of worn shoes, and entered the nightclub, which had a crystal-encrusted foyer. A young lady sat at reception with a bored expression on her face, talking on the phone. She didn't even notice the weird visitor at first. She most likely assumed it was a homeless person who had entered an exclusive place to solicit funds from the nightclub's patrons. When the old man approached her, she obviously stiffened up because his clothes were repaired in numerous places. An ancient hat, entirely worn out, completed the stranger's dismal appearance. He appeared to be on the verge of collapsing. Hello and good evening. I'd like to reserve a table. Is that something you could do? The old man said kindly. He also took out an old wallet indicating that he was about to withdraw cash. The nightclub is completely booked and will remain so, stated the receptionist, who was browsing through a fashion magazine in a chilly tone of voice. The man's lips quivered, and the corner of his eyes welled up with tears as a result of the receptionist's harsh words. After that, the man summoned the guts to look at the receptionist's name on her name tag and say, Amanda... Believe me when I say that I've traveled a long way. I don't have the energy to hunt for alternative lodging, and I notice you have at least ten empty tables. The old man's tenacious gaze was drawn to a row of table numbers that had been hung in their place. You must comprehend there isn't a table here for individuals like you. This isn't a cheap hotel or a shelter for the homeless. This is a five-star establishment. We treasure our reputation and cannot afford to jeopardize it by sheltering suspects. Amanda, who is fed up with the elderly man, expressed her displeasure. So, dial the general manager's number. I haven't slept in a long time and all I want is that you allow me to stay at the nightclub. Even the worst nightclub tab will suffice. In a trembling voice, the old man remarked. A manager came up to the front desk at that point to see what was going on. Amanda briefed Howard Smith about the situation, making sure to remain meaningful eye contact with him. Manager immediately recognized the issue and directed the elderly gentleman to the door. The old man, to his amazement, refused to go. He appealed to the staff's conscience as they refused to summon the general manager. The manager summoned the doorman, who seized the elderly gentleman and began dragging him towards the exit. "'James, please hold your horses.' Allow him to exit by the back door. We don't want this hobo to square all of our visitors away. In a businesslike tone, Mr. Smith stated, the doorman brought the elderly gentleman through the rear room where he encountered Betty, the hotel dishwasher. The woman couldn't help herself when she watched the huge James use force on the old guy and said, allow him to be alone. What are your expectations of him? Isn't it obvious that he's not feeling well? The doorman smiled shyly and released go of the elderly gentleman. Why don't you deal with him if you're so concerned? I'm going to wash my hands of this. Anyway, I'm not hired to deal with squatters and other unhappy individuals, says James as he returns steadfastly to his position at the door. He says. The doorman wandered aloud on his way out of this beggar managed to get inside. Betty, on the other hand, placed her hand on the old man's shoulder and inquired, What's your name, by the way? Don't worry, my husband is on his way to get us. My shift has ended, and I'm available to assist you. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Regarding my name, you may address me as Mr. Stewart, said the old guy, pulling a bottle of pills from his pocket to help him with his headache. Meanwhile, several of the nightclub's female employees devised what they considered to be a wonderful joke. When they saw Betty with the shabbily dressed man, they exclaimed, Betty, we understand that your marriage isn't ideal, but we don't believe this suitor can provide you with a promising future either. In a matter of days, you'd be a widow. Betty remained silent, but she was enraged and reddened profusely. Stuart questioned Betty why her husband was deemed second rate when they were outside. The woman was ashamed at first, but she overcame her fears and shared her story. Her husband, Henry, turned out to be crippled. He had lost his leg as a result of a tragic construction site accident. Because of his employer's negligence, the man's leg was crushed by a huge concrete block that was not securely secured. Unfortunately, the doctors were unable to preserve Henry's leg, but he remained optimistic about the future. The man had a terrible childhood, spending much of it in a group home. 
Betty and he didn't have any children together. They lived in a shanty in a rundown neighborhood. Henry's single prize property was an ancient Ford that he and his wife had saved for almost two years. Motivated man worked as a courier using the automobile. Betty sighed and winked at the old man as she spotted her husband's automobile approaching. Will your husband object to me being in the house? Strangely, the old guy inquired. Obviously not. My spouse Henry is the most wonderful person on the planet. I'm confident he'll like you. Betty replied with a giggle. All three were soon in the car driving to the Robinsons' little residence. Betty's spouse turned out to be a genuinely nice guy with whom he could speak about everything. Henry never complained about life, much to Stuart's amazement. Despite the fact that he suffered from back discomfort as a result of the injuries he had experienced, the evening flew by thanks to their lively banter. The elderly gentleman realized that it had been a long time since he had been so happy. Despite his protests, the Robinsons persuaded the old guy to stay the night. Mr. Stewart awoke with the first rays of sunlight the next morning and turned to Henry with an odd request. He requested whether he could be transported back to the nightclub where he had been abruptly ejected the night before. Mr. Stewart was understood by Henry and he drove him back right away. The old man went straight to the back entrance when they arrived, which he had already been familiar with. He ran upon Amanda in the lobby, who was serving the general manager with an eagerness to please. After receiving a glimpse of the already well-known old man, the girl was taken aback for a while before asking him to go. But, much to her astonishment, Mr. Stewart began conversing with the general manager, who had lost all color in his face. Please, Martin, explain what's going on. I didn't want lawlessness and arbitrariness to prevail here when I put you in charge of the staff. I had planned to hire you as the general manager of several of my New York hotels and nightclubs, said the elderly gentleman who turned out to be the owner of a large nightclub chain. Martin and Amanda proceeded to apologize profusely and grin in an ingratiating manner since they didn't know what else to say. Mr. Stewart, on the other hand, was unyielding. You didn't even care to listen to a client who came to you with a request the day before. This is completely unacceptable in our industry. You are a callous person who lacks even a schmidgen of compassion. That's why I'm firing you and the rest of the service staff. I don't want any of you to stay at my hotel. Martin, the only exception being Betty Robinson, for whom you couldn't possibly find a greater career than that of a dishwasher. While showing his employees to the door, the nightclub's proprietor said sternly, The problem is that Mr. Stewart had already received a number of complaints about his nightclub's poor customer service. He opted to investigate the problem personally because he didn't want to believe rumors. As a result, the elderly businessman decided to dress up and see if his clients were correct in their complaints. The next day, a serious-looking man with a large stack of documents in his hand arrived at Betty and Henry Robinson's residence. The man declared that he had come on behalf of Mr. Stewart and that he had good news for the couple in a cheerful tone of voice. Mr. Stewart had paid for a three-month course of treatment for Henry and had purchased three prosthetic legs of the most up-to-date versions, each serving a particular purpose. Furthermore, the thankful business purchased the Robinsons a charming cottage in a posh section of town as well as a high-end car. When Betty expressed her dissatisfaction with such lavish presents, the guy responded, What Mr. Stewart is giving you is a very small percentage of his riches, similar to a grain of sand in the huge desert. When you offered him food and shelter, on the other hand, you were giving up a considerably larger amount of what you had. My supervisor, believe me, does not take such things lightly, accept his gifts and strive to be good people at all times. Henry and Betty were astounded by their good fortune. They stood there for a long time watching the man go away. Mr. Stewart, who occurred across their paths and acted like a nice wizard towards them, was thanked in their minds. So far, today's video, my dear listeners. We hope you liked it as much as we did. If you like this story, please do not forget to share it with your family and friends. And do not forget to activate the notifications bell so YouTube can notify you every time we upload a new video at Viral Story. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.